it's Micah. Welcome to our Tuesday reaction series where we're looking at the number one Hot 100 Billboard hits of each calendar year. We are at the end of the 1960s already. Wow, That's, that seemed like a, a really quick journey through the 60s, and I guess it was. We only picked one song per year. The number one song of 1969 was The Archies with Sugar Sugar. The Archies uh, were a cartoon group. Sort of like the monkeys were, well, not not quite, but sort of like the monkeys were a manufactured sitcom group uh, based on the Beatles. The Archies were a cartoon rock band uh, on CBS, I believe. I did a little research on this, uh, and they uh, they but and they try had tried to cross over already to the pop charts. But they, uh, their first single, from what I understand, didn't do the, do quite as well. So they wanted to make sure that they had this in the pocket before they released it. So they released it to some, some DJs and said, do you like this or not? And then once they agreed that they did like it at that point, they told them it was actually the cartoon group. So obviously cartoons can't make music. Uh, this was... a uh, uh, sort of like Gorillaz, I guess. It was sort of a behind-the-scenes studio musician. Uh, also, I think Gorillaz, I'm not that familiar with them. I think Gorillaz is, is actually headed up by someone and is, is more or less a real musical entity, whereas the Archies was a de facto concept um, that was brought, where a bunch of studio mus musicians were brought together to do the songs for the show. Um, at any rate, it's an unlikely setup for a humongous hit like this, but it indeed became a big hit, and I am I can hear the the the, um, the song in my head right now, so I am familiar with it. It's one of those songs where uh, you don't really hear it in full anymore. You more or less hear it, I think, on commercials, perhaps. This would be one of those songs that would be easier to co-opt for promotional or advertisement usage because no one really owns it and cherishes it in the same way as maybe a Beatles song or a Rolling Stones record or a Madonna song like where there would be fans and perhaps the artists themselves being possessive over the artistic license being used or the way that their their art was being used this was promotional to start out with so it's been co-opted a number of times over the years for 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 different purposes uh, the title itself, Sugar Sugar, is very is highly suggestive, which means it, uh, not in a sexual way, but in in the sense that you could use it to to uh, to sell um, candy, desserts, baked goods, uh, even sugar itself, or you could use it in a more uh, metaphorical sense to promote other things. And the song itself, from what I remember, is quite. Um, amorphous enough of a song lyrically that you really could tailor it for whatever your promotional needs are so over the years it has i've heard it being used over and over again but i never hear anyone really say "Ooh, let's listen to that archie song uh but ooh, i'm gonna say it now Ooh, let's listen to that archie song this is sugar sugar and now the riverdale carnival presents the archies Take care of the kissing booth while we're singing, Sabrina. Okay, everybody, here we go with our new hit record, Sugar, Sugar! <laughs>
enjoyed that way more than I thought I would. Uh, in my mind, I think maybe I had conflated this song with Louie Louie. So I was expecting something that that rocked a little harder than this. This is very pop with some like, with some sort of Caribbean rhythms almost. In fact, that dun 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 dun. I'm I'm trying to place what other song that's in, or if I just know it from this song. But it sounds very evocative of of some other song. And if you can tell me in the comments, maybe uh, well, not maybe that would be great. <clears throat> so. All I could think of was like, what is the impact, the cultural impact of this song beyond the fact that it was such a big hit when it came out and the fact, like I said, it's been used in commercials and in product placement and that, you know, over the years it's been used for various other purposes. I, I, I can remember, I can't remember any specific advertisements, but I know I've heard it spliced into various places over the years. But other than that, I feel like this is a hallmark bubblegum pop record. It sounds like a template for so much of what we've heard in the subsequent decades, especially with boy bands. As a matter of fact, given how catchy and fun th this song is, I can't even believe, and maybe it, maybe it was released in, as an album track that, that I missed, but I can't believe that the New Kids on the Block or the Backstreet Boys, <clears throat> or any of those boy groups, but those are the two I think most likely candidates. Why, why didn't one of those groups remake this song? I feel like that would have been such a big hit. I can totally hear Jordan Knight singing this. I could hear, I could totally hear the Backstreet Boys doing this, an updated version with a dance breakdown and a big music video. I could. Like to me, this is the no-brainer for one of those groups to to cash in off of this. But maybe maybe they tried and and uh, they weren't interested in selling the 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 rights to the song to have them perform it. But to me, that I would have loved an updated version of this from one of those boy bands. Uh, and also, two specific lyrics in here made me wonder about lyrics from. Uh, made me wonder about lyrics in, in later songs. Uh, the reference to um, You're My Candy Girl took me immediately to New Edition in the 80s and wondering like, did it, was that the inspiration for that lyric in that song? And then there's the, and I'm pretty sure I heard this, the, I think, did, didn't he say pour some sugar on me? Like, it's so funny because if so, it sounds so innocent here, but Def Leppard managed to make it sound so much dirtier when they said it in 1987. And so I'm, I'm not sure, but I thought that's what I heard, heard them say. And that also brings to mind something that's going to take me back to my, one of my recurring themes, uh, which is defending Beyonce. Um, leave Beyonce alone. No, just kidding. But it's so funny that I, in one of the comments for, the, you know, anytime that there's anything regarding Beyonce, people try to just try to attack her. One of the tropes about Beyonce is that she steals everything. She steals every, all these ideas from these other people. And so in the spirit of that, someone was saying that on uh, Texas Hold'em, she was like, Def Leppard said that first. She stole that from them. Well, as a matter of fact, Def Leppard got it from somewhere, too. And that's the thing, people like, when, when you're looking for something, you're gonna find it. And people are looking, but now that some, now that people have made this a thing where like Beyonce is just a big plunderer of other people's music. So they, so they cherry pick all these instances where she gets an influence or an idea or borrows a phrase from somewhere else. Sometimes intentionally, because it's a cultural reference. Uh, but then they don't acknowledge the fact that this is what everyone does. Um, now, watch them not have said that at all in the song, but I'm pretty sure they did, and I'm wondering if Def Leppard got it from this record, or if they wrote it. I don't know if they wrote it, or Mutt Lange, uh, Mutt Lange, I don't know how do you say his name, Lange, uh, he wrote the song for Def Leppard. But at any rate, those were some of the associations I was making with this song. Overall, though, really enjoyed it. Really well-produced record, infinitely catchy. The cartoon kind of sucked. Uh, it was the cartoon animals were cute and everything, but the animation was 
yeah, that that '60s '70s animation where they where they were really trying to like turn out um, turn out things for kids to watch at the lowest possible with the lowest possible budget, <laughs> so that they could sell like toys and cereal. Um, I'm sorry, it's a little bit cynical. I don't know. If, uh, hopefully, there's nobody that really fondly remembers the Archies that's going to take me to task for that. But the but it did seem like the cartoon was a bit subpar. But I know the Archies were pretty big in their time, and obviously, with the uh, assist from this song, they became uh, at least a temporary cultural cultural phenomenon. But the song itself, taught really a really a top notch pop bubblegum pop slash rock-ish record and uh, seemingly a touchstone for how boy band music would be produced in the future if I'm if my ears aren't uh, deceiving me oh, well that was cool we'll be in the 1970s next week that is so bizarre to me uh, next week we'll be looking at Bridge Over Troubled Waters the number one song of 1970 uh, and you know something I forgot to mention in my video last week uh, when I reacted to Hey Jude, I was about to say that Hey Jude reminded me a lot of Bridge Over Troubled Waters. But since we're not looking at either of those songs in this reaction video, we'll go to, we'll we'll go and have that discussion about those two songs and how they are similar or not next week. Stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined, and most of all, please make music better.